Gracious Father, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, thank you for this opportunity to be before your people to deliver this word. Those who are here and those who will be looking at us through our website, our YouTube channel, speak to both, dear Father. Those who hear the word now and those who will hear the word later, let not your word come back void. In everything I do and in everything I say this morning, I'm going to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. I take no credit of my own, but I'm going to point everyone right back to you. So now, as I decrease, increase inside of me, dear Father, and speak a word to your people. I thank you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give God a praise right there? Thank God for our male chorus. Amen. Come on. You can join. You can join. They're recruiting. You can join. You can join. Amen. Amen. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Let's go to the word because I want to make the book talk today. Amen. Amen. Let's make the book talk. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 8. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 8. I want to look at the 38th verse. You may have your Bible. You may have your tablet. You may have your phone. However, find the word. Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 8. I want to look at the 38th verse. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, the classic Amplified Bible. Listen to what it says. But the man from whom the demons have gone out kept begging and praying that he might accompany him and be with him but jesus sent him away saying return to your home recount the story of how many and great things god has done for you and the man departed proclaiming throughout the whole city how much jesus had done for him. This morning, can I use for a subject, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This text right here really begins at the 26th verse. Jesus gets off the ship and he comes into a city and the first thing he finds is a man who is full of demons. This man meets him. If you have a study Bible, he's called a maniac. If you have a study Bible, at the top of that, he'll call him a maniac. A maniac of Guttery. Guttery, the name of the city. And so he meets Jesus, and verse 29 says, for Jesus was uh, already commanded the uncle clean spirits to come out of the man for many times he had snatched and held him he was kept under God and bound with chains and feathers but he would break the bonds and be driven by demons into the desert and Jesus then asked him what is your name and he answered legion for many demons had entered him and they begged Jesus not to command them to depart into the abyss but the bottomless pit here the man meets jesus the demons recognize jesus and jesus is about to command them to come out of the man because he's about to deliver this man this maniac this person who they try to bind him up with chains but the strength of the demons inside the man broke the chains and they put him under guard but they couldn't handle him so that's why he was in the wilderness because nobody wanted to deal with this maniac but jesus comes into the city and he meets the maniac and he's beginning to cast the demons out of the man and the first thing the demon says is that don't don't send us back to hell can i hit a side note even the demons don't want to go to hell 
Oh God, I don't want to hear even they said look at the verse. I'm just reading the verse. He bade them, Jesus, not to command them to depart into the abyss. It means bottomless pit. It is the example or it is the symbol for hell. So even the demons didn't want to go back to hell. I heard somebody say, What in hell do you want? But anyway, let me get back to my text here. Let me get back to my text. So here it is. Jesus is here and, and Jesus commands the demons. They demons say, don't send us to hell. There's some swines. There's some pigs over there. Command us because they got to go anywhere Jesus commands them. That is the power of Jesus, y'all. Anywhere Jesus commands something to go, they're going. So they said, command us. Can we request something of you, Jesus? And Jesus is just being polite. He said, what is it? He said, well, well, don't cast us back to hell because we don't want to go there. Command us to, to go into the swines. So he commanded them to go into the swines, and they did, and the swines went crazy. Now I understand why people go crazy. <laughs> the demons went into the swines, and the swines went crazy, and they ran off the cliff. The whole hood of them, the, the whole God heard, thank you, that's a better word for me, thank you, daughter, ran off the cliff. And the people who saw them, who was keeping the swines, ran into the city and told everybody what has happened. And they came out to see what had happened. And when they came out to see what had happened, look what verse 35 says. And it said the people went out to see what had occurred. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom demons had gone. Look at this, y'all. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Clothes and in his right sound mind and they were seized with alarm and fear and those also who had seen it told them how he had been possessed with demons and restored to health look at this then all the people of the country surrounding the district asked Jesus to depart, to depart from them for they were possessed and suffering with dread and terror so he entered into a boat and returned to the west side sea of Galilee. My, my first point is, y'all, my first point is, when you get delivered, everybody ain't going to be happy. Oh, God. Oh, God. When you get delivered, everybody is not going to be happy. You would think, since this man was such a maniac, that the city would be happy. The crazy man ain't crazy no more. I can let my children walk past the graveyard now. I can let them go to school by themselves. We don't got to worry about the maniac. But they were too scared of what had happened to the demons. And although they see the man, they see the man. They know the man. He's sitting beside Jesus at Jesus' feet, clothed in his sound right mind. And in good health, instead of them being happy for the man, they're like, Jesus, you got to get out of here. I would rather have the power with me than the power against me. But they don't care about the man. They don't care about the man. And I found out that some people who say they're with me don't care about my deliverance. Oh, God. Some, some, some people who say they're with me and know I'm going through something and know it's difficult and know it's hard when I get my deliverance ain't happy for me. Hold up. I thought we were cool. I, I thought you were my homie. I, I thought we were together. I thought when I would be happy, you would be happy. But I got delivered and you ain't happy. Everybody ain't happy when you get deliver and these people weren't happy that Jesus had healed the man. Now I, I thought something was very interesting here in the text here. Now the man was possessed with demons. But the Bible said that when the people came out they were possessed with fear. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I thought the man had demons and the man got delivered but now the man get delivered and the one who was possessed is healed and the ones who were supposed to be healed are now 
Oh God. So so I've learned something. Maybe you're scared of my deliverance because you know what God's gonna do with me. <laughs> Maybe you're scared of my deliverance because you know God's gonna use me. Maybe you're scared of my deliverance because you know I'm gonna tell everybody, look what the Lord has done. <laughs> so 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 these people were afraid and now they were possessed. They were possessed. They were suffering. Now, how many know that fear is a spirit? Fear is a spirit. So, the man got delivered from the demons, but they got possessed with the spirit of fear. Over what? Something the Lord had done for somebody else. Do you like me being bound? Do you like me being jacked up? Do you like my marriage all messed up? Do you like me always complaining? Do you like me always having a pity party? You would think when I got delivered, you would be happy that I got delivered. Then I'm not calling you in the midnight hour and crying on your shoulder. Then I'm not worrying you all the time. But maybe you addicted to me being on your shoulder. Maybe you addicted to my tears. Maybe you addicted to me always having a pity party. Then now I don't have a pity party. You don't have no more addiction. The church should be filled right now. Because I'm preaching good, but Sister Christina, I'm preaching better than the numbers I got, but I'm going to preach to the numbers I got. Oh, God, uh, I feel like I'm preaching the thousands. Can I preach the thousands today? Because somebody is hooked up, jacked up, uh, addicted to your misery, addicted to your pain, addicted to your hurt, and they don't want you delivered because then they can't get their fix on. Oh. They can't get their fits on. The only way they get a fits is when you calling them crying. Jesus, I'm preaching. <laughs> I pet my own. Let me give my own self an offering. <laughs> the, the only way, the only reason <laughs> they still doing what they doing, they addicted to your tears. They addicted to your tears. They addicted to your tears. I receive it. So they addicted to your tears. They addicted to your tears. They addicted to your misery. They addicted to your pain. And you, if you get delivered, they no longer got a fence. The city came out read the text i ain't making it up <laughs> read the text the city came out and said jesus you got to leave well i just delivered a man yeah but we scared you might deliver somebody else oh god uh, oh god we scared you might set somebody else free uh, we scared you might deliver somebody else we scared you might help somebody else we scared you might help somebody else and somebody don't want you set free because they scared you gonna help somebody else <laughs> they scared you gonna set somebody else free they scared you gonna help somebody else get delivered oh god it's a bad thing when i get delivered from demons and you get possessed by fear oh god <laughs> so everybody everybody is not gonna be happy with your deliverance. But can I hit point number two? I didn't mean to stay on point number one so long, Deacon Joy. But can I hit point number two? What I learned in the story is that the man who were possessed, the man who had demons, he was not ashamed of his past or scared to tell his story. He was not ashamed of his past nor was he scared to tell the story. See, some people get delivered, but they don't want you to know what they got delivered from. Well, how I know you got delivered? I got delivered. Well, what you get delivered from? That ain't none of your business. That ain't none of my business. What kind of testimony if it ain't none of my business? Testimony means tell. I don't got to give you the details, but
But I can tell you I got delivered from alcohol. I got delivered from drugs. I got delivered from running women. I got... I don't got to tell you how many. I don't got to tell you the kind of stuff I drunk. But I can tell you I got delivered. But if you're scared to tell me you got delivered, I really wonder if you really got delivered. Because when you really get set free, you're not scared to tell it. When you really get delivered, you want to tell somebody. You're looking for the next drunk because you used to be a drunk and God delivered you. So you're looking for another drunk. Lord, let me find another drunk. But I'm trying to tell him what you did for me. Look what the Lord has done. So you're not ashamed of your past or scared to tell the story. That's why whenever you go to therapy, they always make you say who you are. Go to AAA. They gonna want you to say, I'm, I'm an alcoholic. Go to, go to rehab. They make you say, I'm a drug addict. Because unless you accept who you are and receive your deliverance, you can never get deliverance. So this man knew he was a maniac. He knew he had terrorized the whole city. He knew people didn't like him. But he was not ashamed to tell the look at the text I read originally. It said that he begged Jesus to go with him. But Jesus said, no, you can't go with me. Go to your family and tell them. And the Bible said he proclaimed or he published like a book. He published his story. He wasn't ashamed. Can I hit point number three and I'll be halfway done? <laughs> Can I hit point number three? Because you, you're not ashamed of your past and you're not scared to tell the story when you've really been delivered. But also this man, this man right here, this man who was possessed with the demons, he was willing to be God's billboard. He was willing to be God's billboard. Now before you get happy about that, let me tell you what that means. Let me tell you what that means. Because what, what that really means is that he won't scare to be identified by who he was in order for God to get the glory for who he will, is now. So how did they identify him? That, isn't that the man that was possessed with the demons? Isn't that the one that marriage was broke up? Isn't, isn't that the one that used to be an alcoholic? Isn't that the one that used to be? See, he wanted to be God's billboard. So when you got to be God's billboard, they got to identify to you or who you were in order to see that you were delivered. So everybody who saw the man said, ain't that the one that used to be possessed? Ain't that the one that broke all the chains? Ain't that the one that used to run around naked? Ain't that the maniac? He said, yes, I used to be. See, he won't scared to be God's billboard. And when you're not scared to be God's billboard, then you are identified by who you used to be. See, the only reason you don't want to be God's billboard is because you're still scared you may still be what they said you used to be. Oh, God. Oh, God. See, you, you don't want somebody to tell you you're the ex-drug addict because you still got drugs on the side. And one of your homies who you say, that's the S drug addict, they said, what you mean S? He was shooting up with me last night. Oh, God. What you mean S? He, he, that's the one that used to drink and get drunk. What you mean used to drink? He had a fifth with me last night. Matter of fact, we supposed to meet again and get another one tonight. See, the only reason you don't want to be identified who you used to be because you ain't used to be. <laughs> I know that ain't good English, but I'm telling the story here. Yeah. The only reason you don't want to be identified who you used to be, because you ain't used to be, you still is. Oh, God. And when you still is, you're not willing to be God's billboard. Because when you're God's billboard, they call you what you used to be. And you identify, that's what I used to be. That's what I used to be. That's what it used to be. That's what it used to be. I'm not that anymore. I'm not scared to be, I'm willing to be God's billboard. But, but can I hit my fourth point and I'll be out, y'all? Smells of chicken frying. Can I, can I hit my fourth point and I'll be out? I promise you, I'll be out. I don't know how quick, but I'll be out. My fourth point said, now check this out, y'all. Check this out. You can't let the lack of excitement, joy, and the enthusiasm of others hinder you in any way. Yes. Let, me, let me say it again. You can't, see, you expect somebody to be happy with, for you, but if they're not. 
You expect somebody to have enthusiasm for what you're going through. But if they're not. You expect somebody to have joy for being delivered. But if they're not, so what? That's, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Brother Welling, you expect somebody to be happy that you're married. But if they don't. <laughs> so what? <laughs> you expect somebody to say, I got a, you see my newborn child, you expect them to be happy, but they jealous because they wanted to be their newborn child. But, so you say, so what? See, see, that's the problem. We too busy hooked on somebody else's excitement. <laughs> you too busy hooked on somebody else's enthusiasm. See, I don't need your enthusiasm if I'm happy. Oh, God, you, that, they're going to catch that on Tuesday. I don't need nobody else's enthusiasm if I'm happy. If I'm already happy, if you're not happy with me, it really don't make me no difference because I'm happy. Let me win. The, I'm, I'm not going to play the lottery, but let me win the lottery. I don't care if you're happy with me or not. I'm happy because I'm counting $100 bills. <laughs> you don't got to be happy with me when I'm happy. And too many people determine let other people's lack of enthusiasm See, I've learned this, y'all. Some people, I don't tell what I've done. That way, I don't got to worry about them not being happy, Deacon Joy. <laughs> you tell somebody that, that you got a new car, and they're like, oh. Oh, I saw y'all new car, and I said, Elder, is that new? He said, yeah. I said, good God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just showed it. I was at Golden Corral, and I saw Deacon Joy. And so the Christian, I said, hold up, is that new? Elder said, yeah, that's new. I said, good God. That's, that's, that's like, yeah, but you happy when somebody else happy. You are happy when somebody else get delivered. But if you're not happy with me, so what? I'm still driving something. Yeah. <laughs> if I had said, oh, Deacon Joy is still driving something new. Yeah. Whether I'm happy with him or not, it's still driving something new. And that's the problem. If God has delivered you, stop waiting for somebody else to get happy. Get happy all by yourself. Stop waiting for everybody else. See, see if I'm going to if I'm gonna be happy, I'll throw the party myself. You don't got to throw the party for me. I'll throw it myself. I'm going to throw my own party. And if you don't show up, that's fine. It's more for me. Oh, <laughs> y'all ain't going to help me there. Well, I invited all these people and nobody showed up. So what? I'm still having a party. Because the ones that show up are the really ones that happy for me. We too busy worrying about the number. I'm not worried about the number. I'm worried about the quantity. I'm worried about the, I'm worried about the quality, not the quantity. The quality. I'd rather have five that got quality than have a hundred who don't like me. Oh God, you mean I'm feeding a hundred people who don't like me? Let me feed five people who like me. Let me feed five people who are happy that I'm making it. Let me feed five people who are excited that God is working in my life. You got a hundred people and none of them can stand you and all talking behind your back and all don't want to see you go down. You feed a hundred people that don't like me, don't like you. I'm going to keep my money in my pocket. I'll feed the five who love me. Oh God. Oh, God. My wife did something in marriage retreat. I thought it was so interesting, Ella. My wife did something in marriage retreat. She said, if you had, a, a, a had to go back and you can only invite 10 people to your wedding, how many? 11. If you can only invite 11 people to your wedding, who would you invite? Now that you know who's ready. <laughs> Jesus. See, see, when you first get married, you invite everybody because you think everybody happy for you. But somebody looking there, look the dress she got on. I, if I was me, it should be me. I don't got that dress on. See, I knew, can I be honest? Can I be honest? Can I be honest? I don't care if it's on, on tape or not. Can I be honest? I knew I had some haters at my wedding. Oh, God. Uh, Deacon Joe, I knew I had some haters at my wedding, but I was smiling. <laughs> yes, I was. Like a chest cat, I was smiling. What was I cool? I was cool while I was smiling. Cool was there. I was like, what was I smiling, Dr. there? I was there. I was smiling like a chest cat, because I know what I was getting. Oh, God. And I knew you were mad, and I knew what I, oh, God, I ain't gonna go there. Oh God, but with God bless you. I don't care if you're a hater or not. I'm going to smile like a chest cat and I know what God has done for me. You up there worried about who's happy with you and who's not happy with you. So what? You always going to have somebody hating on you. Always going to have somebody criticizing you. Always going to have somebody talking about you saying they shouldn't have did that in a wedding and I wouldn't have did this. And when you ain't getting married, you ain't getting married. And guess what? When I was, when everything was said and done, 
I didn't know what to have. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I didn't know what to have. <laughs> you got to stop allowing other people's response to your joy and your happiness dictate how you going to serve God. You not happy with your car because somebody didn't like it. You not happy with what God, your promotion, because somebody didn't like it. <laughs> You're not happy with God bless you because somebody is not excited about what God is doing for you. That's why you need to pick and choose who you tell certain news to. And when they come to you and tell you, oh, you didn't tell me you got a promotion. You know, somebody didn't. <laughs> I'm not explaining it. I'm not telling you why. I'm just saying, you know, something I didn't. Oh, okay. Because I knew you weren't going to be happy with me. I knew you weren't going to be happy with me. So since I knew you weren't going to be happy with me, I wasn't going to mess up your day. <laughs> why should I mess up your day and tell you how good God is to me when you ain't going to be happy with me? So I ain't going to tell you. I ain't going to tell you. I ain't going to tell you he just paid all my bills off. I ain't going to tell you he just got me a new house. I ain't going to tell you he just sent a check in the mail. Because you ain't going to be happy with it anyway. So I don't want to mess up your day. I was thinking about you. And I thought it would just be cruel of me, Deacon Joy, just to mess up your happy day. You think I'm still broke. I want you to still think it like that. You think I'm still down and out. You keep on thinking like that because it won't mess up your day. I'm happy in Jesus. Because I refuse to let somebody else dictate how I'm going to praise my God. Because you're not happy with what he's done for me. I learned something. I learned this at an early age, and I'm closing. I learned this before I ever got a title, before I ever got anything. I learned rejoice with them that rejoice. But the Bible got a sub note in there. It got a subconscious thing in there that's not written. Because what it says is, if you rejoice with those who rejoice, I'll hear up and give you yours. <laughs> now, see, that's, 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 the, that's the hidden text there. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Why? Because if you rejoice with them, then you can get yours. But as long as you still upset that somebody got theirs, that means you ain't ready for yours. Look what the Lord has done. Every person in the city should have been happy for the maniac that got delivered. Every person in the city should have been rejoicing and said, Jesus, come eat at my house. Because you didn't you didn't deliver this maniac that has been terrorizing the city. Can I close on this? I thought it was very interesting how when you read the chapters before this chapter, when Jesus did deliverance, he told everybody, don't tell nobody. Read the text. He tells them, don't tell nobody. Don't, don't let them know what I did because he wasn't trying to promote himself. But this man, he said, go show yourself to your family. And your friends, I want you to go show yourself to them who knew you were jacked up, who knew you were messed up. Let them see you now. And some of us don't want to go back to our haters and our enemies. And you got to go before them and they look at you. And they say, that can't be. No, that's not. And you say, and you got to just let them see. The text says, look what the Lord has done. I don't got to talk to you. All you got to do is see me. The text says, they saw the man sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind. Notice the text didn't say they talked to the man. The text said they saw the man. Somebody just needs to see you. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to get out of here, Mr. Harvey. Somebody needs to. The last time they saw you, you were crying. 
The last time they saw you, you were throwing fits. The last time they saw you, you were having a pity party. The last time they saw you, you were throwing in the towel. You weren't ready to throw in the towel. You were throwing in the towel. The last time they saw you, you were going through. But all they need to do is see you now. And they'll know it was nobody but God that brought you this far. Look what the Lord has done. Come on, give God a praise right there. Stand to your feet all over the house. We're about to get out of here. I'm done. I'm through. I'm finished. Jesus told the lepers, go show yourself to the priest. Why? Because only the priest could affirm and ratify that they were clean according to the law. May I propose to you in this house that God is telling you to go show yourself to some people. Because they're going to affirm and ratify that God's been good to you. <laughs> I'm a mess with some people. Because Deacon Joe, y'all been, y'all been married how long? 11, 12 years. You need to text somebody and say, 12 years. It's almost 12. Don't argue in church over I'm trying to get y'all to 13. <laughs> you need to text somebody and say, it's been 12 years. Oh, God. Uh, Jesus. You, you need somebody who said you wouldn't make it one. You need to text them and say, it's been 12 years. Somebody who said we wouldn't be around, that we're going on eight years. Been somebody said, y'all wouldn't make it a year. I'm going to text them and say, it's been eight years. Somebody who said you wouldn't be sober for 30 days. It's been seven months. Some, somebody who said you couldn't get out of this dilemma. You couldn't be happy. You got to text them and let them know, I've been happy for this. You got to show yourself to somebody else and let them know. Because somebody put their mouth on you. Oh, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody put their mouth on you and said you wouldn't do this and said you wouldn't do that and said you won't be that. You need to test them and say, and say look what the Lord <laughs> had done. That's all you need to do. Just tell them. And then give them why you text them. Look what the Lord has done. I've been married for 12 years. Look what the Lord has done. I've been sober for a year now. Look what the Lord has done. God's just blessed me with a new house. Take a picture of your car and just say, look what the Lord has done. You told me I'd never have a new car. You said I'd be busted, disgusted, and never be anything. But look what the Lord has done. I graduated with my masters. I, I, oh, God, look, look what the Lord has done. Somebody need to know. Somebody need to know. Somebody told the friends of that man maniac, he'll never be sober. He'll never be sane. You just got to deal with him. We need to put, lock him up and put him away. And they tried. The Bible said they tried. They tried to bind him. Tried to put guards on him. And they couldn't handle him. But now he went back publicizing what Jesus has done. Look what the Lord has done. You need to let somebody know. You need to let somebody know this week, look what the Lord has done. Every head by every eye closed. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and your love. You've been good to us and you sent the word to us that's not going to come back void. We give it glory and we give it praise for it now, dear Father. And we thank you for this word. And bring that person back to our remembrance who spoke on us. And they didn't speak positive. Bring them back to our memory so we can show him, show them what you have done. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I don't.